The views expressed are solely those of the speaker and not necessarily those of Paltalk.com, AVM software, or its advertisers. News Talk is online. News Talk Online is a production of Paltalk.com, the largest multimedia interactive program on the Internet with more than 4 million unique users, on demand on iTunes and on YouTube, and uh, on my blog, GaryBombGarten.com, where you are encouraged to post uh, your comments, whether you agree with yours truly or not. And thanks to our good friends at CRN Digital Talk Radio, we're syndicated to an additional 12 million households. I am your host, Gary Baumgarten. Welcome to the show. First, I want to uh, publicly thank my team, Boaz Frankel, Alan Jacy, and Dan Caputi for a tremendous job that they did yesterday in helping in the coverage of uh, the miracle on the Hudson River when the Airbus uh, glided in for an emergency landing after losing both engines. And uh, all 155 souls on board uh, were uh, rescued. Uh, only minor injuries, the people who went to the hospital for precautionary reasons only. It is without a doubt, as we all know today, very much a miracle. The pilot, without a doubt, very much a hero. And I just want to thank them, especially Alan and Dan Caputi, who ran to the scene and brought us live coverage from the scene right here on News Talk Online on Paltalk.com, extended coverage for about two and a half hours, and I thank you for that. But today, our guest is Dr. Olivier Amison or Amason. I know, uh, doctor, you will correct me because obviously at least one of those pronunciations is wrong. Uh, Dr. Amason was a noted cardiologist. He had a thriving practice. He was the former uh, personal physician to the Prime Minister of France, uh, came over here to New York City and had this practice going was on the top of his game, but then suffered alcoholism and uh, suffered for a long time, and it almost ruined his entire life. He actually nearly died. Well, not only did he find what he believes a cure to his alcoholism or, I guess, any addiction, uh, he wrote a book, uh, a very uh, introspective and detailed book about his experiences. The book is called The End of My Addiction, and uh, I have read at least a portion of it. The, the original uh, book that was supposed to be shipped to us didn't arrive, so I didn't get it until late, so I haven't finished the book as I try to do. I try to read any time I have an author the book through, but I got a good sense of it. Uh, so I think we're going to have a great interview here. Uh, doctor, is it a Mason? How do you pronounce your name, sir? Well, hi, Gary. My name is Olivier Amason. That's the spelling. Amason. Uh, the, the Amason. How's Amason. that? Amason. Pretty good, huh? Right. Excellent. Okay. Yes. I apologize for that. Um, no. You know, I want to get, obviously, because a lot of people want to know uh, in your journey here, uh, and, and that, you know, you mentioned it right in the beginning of the book, uh, and then you talk about how you got to uh, figuring out as a physician, healing thyself, basically, how to treat your addiction of alcoholism. Uh, but before we get to that, I've got to tell you, what I find uh, most interesting about the book is not uh, the conclusion that there is a medical cure for alcoholism. But what I find uh, not only interesting but extremely disturbing was the way your alcoholism was uh, basically treated and how you were treated by colleagues, friends, and by professionals who you went to for help um, who almost treated you like you were a freak as opposed to how a physician would treat somebody who comes in with another ailment like, uh, a, a, like a heart problem or a lung problem or, 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 or a pain in the back or a headache or any other kind of ailment. You were treated completely differently than the way you as a physician w were trained to treat people for, uh, 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 for example, your especially a heart problem. That must have been very uh, difficult for you. Yes, it, it is in fact, yes, thank you for pointing that out. I think that's, a, a, that's one of the reasons, I think, why I wrote that book. About. There are other reasons too. But uh, being having an addiction, uh, you feel, I mean, you're basically, there's kind of a discrimination, I'm, and I'm not speaking for 
all physicians. Uh, some physicians treated me marvelously, kindly and beautifully as, uh, as we physicians are supposed to treat uh, the patient. The enemy is not uh, the patient, the enemy is the disease. And some, uh, actually, uh, physicians do indeed uh, not treat uh, uh, alcoholics or addicts with the same, I'd say, care or respect that uh, we should treat uh, any patient. That is very uh, unfortunate, and I hope that that is going to change. And uh, actually, there were interviews in which alcoholics, and, and that was, that's was that been taped, it was published uh, not that long ago, and in which people talked about their alcoholism, and their internists actually tried to change topics. That, in fact, reflects uh, not that physicians are unkind, not a bit, but that physicians, when uh, feeling that they are powerless in a situation that they really can't help, which is the case with alcoholism, are basically blame it on the patient. And that used to be the case with cancer or TB, and uh, when that couldn't be uh, treated. So uh, it's perceived by a physician as a, as a, as a failure, and therefore the physician uh, unconsciously has some anger which he uh, transfers and puts on the patient, and that's very, very unfortunate. I'm sure things will change, but it's some kind of a double jeopardy because not only do you have, like when one has cancer or any a disease, you, a disease, but in addition, the double jeopardy is like you is that you are basically treated as if you were responsible for it. So you, and that's something which should be should change. That is very painful. Not only are you ill and, and there's nothing you can do. People think you just you just have to stop, but you can't. I mean, it is. It's been recognized as a disease by by the AMA more than half a century ago by the World Health Organization. It's known. It is a killer. It, alcoholism kills 300 patients a day in the U.S. alone, which is more than any cancer uh, taken um, alone. Uh, it affects more than 10% of the population. We all know somebody who is an alcoholic in the family. or And, and in fact, uh, the disease has not been affected by all the treatments that had been introduced in the past 50, 70 years. I mean, the mortality remains what it is. And, um, and even in patients who manage to become abstinent either by themselves or with the help of AA 